Hey guys, my name is Tommy Cowalder. I'm a grassroots American racing driver from Scranton, Pennsylvania, currently racing in the North American F1000 Championship. Not having the funding for karting, I started racing in 2016 with simulators, working as often as possible after school and on the weekends and any job I can find to fund the beginnings of my racing career. From the early stages, I've had a fight for a career in motorsport, but I have high aspirations of winning races and championships in as many different disciplines of motorsport as I can. Through this vlog series, I'll be bringing you guys along for the ride from this year in the F1000 championship to the future as I rise to the ranks of motorsport. Hey guys, welcome to uh, my vlog series. I'm starting this this year just to kind of document everything that's going on with my racing career as I kind of try to rise through the ladder of motorsport here. This is uh, round one of the North American F1000 championship. I'm competing in this the entire season this year. Um, this is my first real go at it. I drove the car at Mid-Ohio last year in what was essentially just a glorified test session. I did race it finished fifth but I never really did a full weekend where I really got used to the car so this is the first time doing that. This is day three here at Carolina. The last two days have just been testing, getting used to the car, working on all the quirks of like the gearbox and everything. Um, so today I'm qualifying the car in a few hours here so I'll check in with you guys after that. All right guys so qualifying is over. It, it went pretty well. I qualified P3 um, ahead of my teammate who's in P4. Um, we were chasing set up a little bit throughout the, uh, throughout the day and the last few days. Um, I don't think the car is quite where uh, it can be. And I also don't think my driving is also quite where it can be. Uh, I think there's a lot more time that I can find. Even if we don't touch the setup, I think there's over a second that I can find just in my driving and that would put me in full position by a, a mile. Um, so. You know, I'm, I'm confident in my ability and I know what I can do. I just have to get more experience and get more experience in the car. And I really think that I can pull it off. Um, yeah, it's just about getting the seat time. Uh, you know, out of everyone on the grid, I'm the least experienced here. So it's, it's just about, you know, trusting the process and not looking too much at the results and trying to read too much into them. So, yeah, tomorrow are the races um, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, guys, it's race day. My hair is a little bit messy. I kind of just got up. So, uh, yeah, we're racing here in about an hour for F1000. Um, and after that, we have another qualifying session and then race two. So, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm just kind of focusing on, you know, making the most of my position. I'm starting P3 on the second row next to my teammate who's P4. Um, and I think I can move forward. Um, I just about, I just want to make sure I do it safely and I don't make any mistakes. I am here you know, thinking about the championship and I don't want to, you know, do anything stupid. <clears throat> the accordion effect in these cars is quite extreme because they break in a very short amount of time. Um, so the car in front of you comes up real quick as soon as you're in the braking zones. Um, and then the exit uh, accordion effect is pretty dramatic too, but the entry is ridiculous. Um,
Alright guys, so here I am, lined up P3 for my first race in the North American F1000 Championship. Warming up the tires a little bit, as much as we can before the start of the race here. And what you're about to see is my easiest overtake I've ever done in my entire life. Just lights up the wheels and I just squeeze on by. So now I'm starting second for my first race in the North American F1000 Championship here. Alright, so coming up to the point where the safety car is going to pull into the pit, so we're going to have to line up side by side here. And what I don't know at this point is that my dash is actually slowly starting to fail. Um, so I do not have any rev lights right now. I don't notice that because I'm so low in the RPMs that I won't notice that. Cutting to the visor cam here and you can sort of make out the fact that I'm supposed to be seeing some things here that I'm just absolutely not seeing. So, coming up to the start of the race here, left foot on the brake, right foot as full throttle as you can be, and getting ready to go, I should have some shift lights, I don't have them, so start of the race, smack the rev limiter, not ideal, teammate gets in on the inside here on the left, hit get on the brakes, teammate squeezes by, Shane Pareto up in front locks up, I decide I'm going to try to go around the outside of him here, still no shift lights whatsoever on the dash, um, every now and again the gears also cut out, you can kind of see that there, get the move done, but squeeze the entry and Shane is on the inside here think about going around the outside but I think better of it going through the corners here I've never driven this car on cold tires before in my entire life uh, at least trying to do it fast I've done it warming up the tires in the sessions but going into a race this is my first time driving it on cold tires trying to drive it fast so definitely getting a little bit squirrelier than I'd like there Just doing the best that I can here to stick with Shane. I really want to move up positions. I know I have the pace to win this. Uh, even though it's my first time driving this car, I, I just know and I believe in myself that I can do what I can, even with the dash issues. Uh, the dash is obviously not ideal. Little snap of oversteer there as I get through the kink there, then hard on the brake. I'm driving around the dash right now. I don't have shift lights, so I'm just going off of a tone in my ear when you know I think I'm at the rev limiter. And I'm just counting the gears on my head to try to figure out what gear I'm in. You can see Shane has a little bit more horsepower than both me and Nathan. So you see on the straights he gains on Nathan and really pulls away from me. He's running the newer engine um, that you're allowed to run. So he's just able to just have, you know, a little bit more horsepower than everyone else. At least everyone else that's running the engine that we're current, me and Nathan are running. A little lock up from Shane up ahead there. I'm just trying to close the gap to him, do the best laps that I can despite uh, the issues that I have. And the issues, you know, are not the team's fault. This is just unfortunate. Um, it's a thing that happens in racing, something that we, you know, we can't fully prevent. It's just something that happens. And, you know, you just have to put your head down in the moment and do the best that you can and control what you can't control and not try to control things you can't control during the race because it's not how it works. All right, guys, fast forwarding a bit more up the race. I've actually had a few laps now where the dash is actually working, as you can see there, it's actually lighting up the rev lights, which is great. We're currently in a battle for third place here, uh, fourth place guy finally close enough to challenge me, he's on the inside here, thought about going around the outside, didn't quite work. Go to send it on the brakes, he goes a little bit too deep, cut it on the inside here, he's still on the right side, I'm going to do my best up in this corner to go around the outside here. A little snap of oversteer. Couldn't quite carry the speed that I need to go around the outside, so I have to tuck in behind him here. Try my best to stay as close as possible to him. He has a newer engine, so he's got a few more horsepower than us. As you can see here on this straight, he just pulls right away. So my real only hope is to stay as close as I possibly can to him. Keep the gap nice and tight so that I have the draft. But, you know, you can see on that straight, not much I can do about this. Just going to try to send it as much as I can. Nice lunge on the brakes there again, getting as close as I can. A little bit arrow watch here, you can see it pushes me right off the track. Using all the road on exit, I pay for the whole track and use the whole track. Getting nice and close to him again. Actually get a pretty solid exit from here, you see there's really even no real accordion effect for a second there. Then he just starts to pull away a little bit again with the straight line speed. Trying my best to talk into his draft here, but you can see he's really just pulling away from me on the straight. Going through the kink here, getting ready to do another almighty send on the brakes to try to close the gap. It's actually exactly what I do, lock up the rears a little bit. See just how close I'm able to get to him in here. 
electronics start to fail a little bit. I actually miss a shift there, so I'm stuck in third, drop it down to second. And this is where things start to uh, start to do the thing with the racing, where the car actually feels really good right before it starts to break, because that's exactly what's about to happen. A little bit of another scent on the brakes here. Alright, so this is the start of what I was talking about. You can kind of hear it coming out of the corner here. The car is just starting to have some issues. So basically what's happening here is the issue that we were having is just starting to catch up to us. The whole thing that was making the dash disappear, the gear indicators and all the different electronics uh, just caught up to the whole car at this point. Wiring harness is actually like kind of on fire I'm pretty sure at this point. So I'm just gonna let the rest of this clip play out so that you can hear the sounds the car is making as well as my immediate reaction once the car comes to a class stop here. <clears throat> Alright, so race one done. It didn't quite go to plan. I didn't actually finish the race. I was fighting for P3. Um, we had an electrical issue right on the start and it, uh, I lost my shift lights. So I actually lost positions on the start and I uh, had a fight for it for there, from there. But I couldn't see what gear I was in and couldn't see what my RPM was. So I was sort of just like going off of muscle memory and sound and everything. Um, so yeah, this really did not go to plan at all. Uh, and somewhere towards the end of the race, I was fighting for third and the engine cut out. So uh, definitely not the way that I wanted it to go. Um, but uh, we got qualifying for race two here pretty soon and I'm hopping in the spare car. So it should be better. All right, I'll check in with you guys after that. All right guys, so as you can see here, I'm obviously not in the spare car. Uh, we had a issue, something with the starter, if I'm not mistaken, uh, on the spare car. So I am actually in the race in the regular car. Uh, I ended up missing qualifying, so I'm starting from the back of the grid in the race here. And as you can see, the grid is leaving here without me. So basically what's happening here is, so the team had some issues with the tire pressures here and they're trying to get it done as quickly as possible. Um, this means that I'm gonna start the race uh, off the leaders uh, by a significant margin, which is unfortunate. The team's doing the best that they can. Unfortunately, this kind of stuff happens and really nothing that you can do about it. So I'm sitting here for what seems like an absolute eternity to me. It looks like way less on this video, but to me, this is an eternity. Basically what he's saying to me here is, in race one I was able to see how slow the pace car is going and I'm probably going to be able to catch them before the start of the race if we leave like very 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 soon. Uh, this She's going to come over, she's going to tell me that uh, I'm going to go down the pit lane, which is literally what she's about to say like right now. Pretty sure she says it like right here. And yeah, so I'm still sitting here and I just feel like this is like 30 minutes <laughs> that I'm sitting here. In reality it's only like a minute. But yeah, it feels like an absolute eternity, and pretty soon here I get ready to go. He's checking the last tire, doing the last thing of tire pressures, uh, and I'm about to head on out here any second now. There I go.
So I ended up not making the start of the race, unfortunate, but it is what it is, can't change anything. So the session ended up just becoming uh, basically just a test session for me, seeing what I can do. So that's what I'm going to play for you, my fastest lap of the race weekend here with no narration, so enjoy the lap, guys. Um, fortunately I couldn't get out in qualifying too. Um, we had a wiring harness issue that um, just didn't quite get fixed yet. Um, it was what caused my failure in the first race. Um, actually it caught on fire. The wiring harness itself caught on fire. Um, that's what caused the issue. So qualifying two it wasn't fixed in time so I was supposed to start race two from the back of the grid. Um, then we had another issue with the tire pressures um, at the start and we didn't quite make it out in time for the start so I actually started 17 seconds off of the start of the race from everyone else um, so yeah that's not ideal I think I ended up finishing fifth still um, the positives of the weekend is the fact that it's my first race weekend in the series and I had some significant pace um, I'm less than a second off of the fastest guys um, and yesterday I qualified my teammate uh, today he was a little bit quicker than me but I had a lot of issues I even in race two I didn't even have the dash um, I was just guessing um, you know when was the correct point to shift you know shifting off of my ears and you know trying to figure out when the correct time to do it is so I mean overall it's kind of positive I can spin it to be kind of positive um, I didn't I didn't want the first entry of this vlog series to be negative like this um, so you know in reality you can't focus too much on results um, yeah you know, especially since everyone in the series have been running it for a lot longer than I have so you know focusing on results like this is not really productive um, you know in reality I can just focus on my pace and you know how I'm doing as a driver and considering how much we were chasing the setup as a team um, and just all the difficulties that we had I think it's a pretty positive weekend um, so yeah thank you guys for watching the vlog series um, hopefully the next few episodes are gonna be a lot more positive than this